Hello, Michelle. Thank you so much for joining me. I, I was looking forward to speaking to you because for a variety of reasons. Number one, um, you have a lot of experience indirectly because of your father. Uh, by the way, you, you know, if anybody's looking at this, it's this is Michelle Gilmore. Scott Gilmore owns the brokerage and the regional director for this area. And Michelle was put into this situation indirectly by being your dad's assistant pretty much throughout the years. And I, I was looking forward to this because I wanted to get your insight in terms of, okay, now that you've completed the Humber College and you've gone through the training and now you're licensed, I wanted to see what the differences were in terms of did it prepare you for the Humber College or was that all brand new stuff and now you're you're jumping into this with fresh eyes. So take it away, Michelle Gilmore. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate that and I appreciate all your questions. So yeah, definitely indirectly grew up as a part of this. My first summer job in high school was shredding paper. Um, our office looked a little bit different, a little less modern, but it was a fun time. Got to meet everyone on the team. I had known them through events and stuff like that, but it's a lot different coming into the office and working with them every day. Right. Um, and then after that, I went to university, and in the summers, I would come back home and work here and just help with you know social media, help with filing, anything like that. And after school, after five years at university, I wasn't able to find a job in my field, much like a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I was very lucky to have an opportunity to you know, my dad said, just come work for me, be my assistant for the summer while you figure out what you want to do or what you can do in your field. And it just got to an opportunity where the summer was over and I actually really liked being here and I liked the tasks I was given. I liked the opportunities. I liked the people in the office. And yeah, I just decided to stay. And that's the funny thing about you. Your intentions wasn't to do real estate at Never. all. <laughs> it wasn't even in your sight line. It was more like, I'm going to go to university. I'm going to get a career and I'm going to do my own thing. But yeah. then that changed clearly. Yeah, very much so. And then it was never... It was never pushed on me that I had to do real estate. It was never something that was like, oh, yeah, Michelle's going to grow up and, like, take over. And it's like that never was a conversation even. My entire family, there's more than 40 people when our family gets together, and most of them are in real estate. Yes. So I knew I wanted to do something different. Um, that went out the window real quick. But, yeah, I really enjoy it. I really enjoyed the Humber courses, as you were mentioning. I went through the Humber courses, there's seven now. So it's a little bit different than when, you know, my dad or my aunts and uncles did the courses. Well, they had a book. Yes. It was an actual physical book. And it was like, here, study that, regurgitate the uh, test, and then uh, meet us next week. It was basically exactly. that. It wasn't even... It wasn't even a course. It was more like just just memorize this, regurgitate on the test, and uh, we'll see you here next week. It was very quick, too. It wasn't uh, uh, what we have today. Exactly. What is interesting, though, because I found my dad's first real estate exam, the prerequisite was still there that you had to get a 75% to pass. So I thought that was super interesting, even though the material might be different right. or the structure of it might be different. But you still have to get a 75% to pass. Um, I guess that standard never changed. Apparently not. No, apparently not. But what did change was that they actually give you practical examples now in role-playing activities in what they call their simulations. Yes. So in Sim 1, it's about residential real estate. Sim 2 is about commercial real estate. And you actually get to work with your peers, work with instructors to role-play being in those positions as a salesperson, as a buyer, as a seller, and figure out how you should or would interact and then change accordingly. Yeah, and that's a very good point. I think that based on your experience now that, that you went through the whole course and, and you were your Scott's assistant, you know, live-in assistant at that point, um, what was the difference? Did you notice a huge difference in what they were teaching and what you know? Or was it, oh, well, this is interesting. I didn't know this part. I think the biggest difference is that other than the two simulations, everything else is self-paced education. So you don't have a teacher there to answer your questions. You don't have someone giving practical examples. The other five courses are simply just written text. They don't provide a ton of real life examples. So when I am 
assisting in you know a social media capacity or um, dropping off flyers, meeting photographers, stuff like that. Um, I get to see firsthand what actually happens and feel that it's, I always said, it's kind of like event planning when you right. have a listing. Yes, it um, really is. And as, as I was an assistant, obviously I'm not able to do any type of trading activity, but for the, the marketing aspect of it, now that's going to be a part of what it's like to be an agent because I'm not going to have that assistance. So I'm going to be doing everything on my, by myself or with the other team members. So just to know that that's coming down the pipe is definitely something they do not teach you in the salesperson no. courses. <laughs> and the, the wonderful thing about you and your role in here, well, one of the many roles that you do here in, in, in this brokerage is the social media aspect of it. And I think for a lot of agents, that is a big game changer for them. Um, I've been fortunate enough to interview many agents, both experienced and brand new agents. And I've noticed that because of your experience with social media and the way you structure things has been a massive game changer for myself and for other agents out there because we now have a, a schedule and we have ideas. And I know for myself, speaking for myself, uh, the time that it takes to do a video or a you know social media post is greatly reduced because that can come to you and say, okay, hey, I was thinking of doing this and I've been stuck at it and for 10 minutes. What do you think? And then you clearly will go, yeah, here, click, click, click. And now it's done within 30 seconds. And I'm like, well, I could have saved myself 10 minutes. But I wanted to thank you for that because that is a game changer. And did you ever think your knowledge of social media would translate to real estate? Absolutely not. And I appreciate you saying that. I like, I love helping the agents with that. It, you know, it helps a lot. I mean, to justify the amount of screen time I have on my phone definitely justifies that. But, um, just to know that whatever I was going to do at university or, or do with my life, it was always going to be about helping people. And in real estate, you definitely get that like when you see the transactions happening with buyers and sellers. But a lot of times what people, what brokerages can forget is you have, you have to help your agents. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time it's those, those nuanced things that you think that everyone knows, but they don't. And social media is a great example of that. All of the ways that you can come up with ideas, the programs that help you come up with ideas, that create the posts for you, that generate those ideas when you're sitting there like, oh my God, I have nothing to post. And I, I like that I get to show them this like new era, this new way of doing it. And the best compliment I, I ever receive is, um, I had no idea you could do that. Thank you so much for opening my mind. And I, I yeah, and that's a very good point because I've seen it firsthand, myself mm -hmm. included, and and others that you've helped is what they thought was almost an impossible mountain to climb. You've made it so easy for them to just start. You know, sometimes it's just as simple as holding the phone up in your hand and saying, "Hey, this is me. I'm in my listing," or "Come and check out this lease," and post. It doesn't have to be highly edited. It doesn't need the best equipment. Mind you, those are all great things to have, but I think many agents have this incredible fear of just starting when in reality is just a simple turn on your camera, record, send. You know, and I, I thank you for that because you've helped so many agents do that and we've seen the results and we've seen a lot of the agents have incredible results from just the views and some of them actually have received uh, contacts yes. from their posts. Can you want to talk about that? Yeah, for sure. And I think it, it goes to your point of just putting the phone up and, and just recording and saying something because I've noticed that the, the good leads, the good contacts that people are getting from social media always come from those posts that have them in front of the camera and not behind it. And it's in the name, social media. You have to be social with it. You have to be interactive. It's great if you have someone running your social media, but understand that they're not you and they can't connect with the right people the way that you can. And sometimes people get caught up in that, oh, I have to use you know, this color scheme. I have to use this type of captioning. I have to do all these things to make it seem that I have all of all of this understanding and all of it in order and I'm so professional and it's it's great to have those things if you're ready for them but if you're just starting out or, or maybe you're a little bit nervous or don't know where to begin 
putting that phone up and introducing yourself, introducing your listing or with our brokerage, any of our agents' listings. That's right. Um, it's just such a great way to get started, get that comfortability and figure out, okay, I can actually get contacts doing it this way. Yeah, and I've spoken to a lot of agents here at this brokerage too who overthink the most simplest thing. It's like, oh, I don't have the right lighting. I don't have the right mm -hmm. posting. I don't have the right phone. I don't have the right listing. I don't have the right lighting and mm -hmm. hair and makeup and suit and clothing. And it's like, no, Michelle has clearly told you all you have to do is just start. And I find that the more you do it, the more you record yourself and post on social media, the easier it becomes because now ideas start popping in your head. The biggest thing that I've noticed too is because of your help, those that don't speak English clearly or have an accent or anything, it doesn't matter. Social media it doesn't, it doesn't care about your accent, doesn't care about your height, you know, anything, it doesn't care. As long as you're posting information that is relevant or for your viewers, that's the game changer. You know, and I've learned a lot from you from, from what I've seen you do with people. And the, the biggest thing that we do with the agents that really has helped them is, and it's helped me, is uh, doing the audit. Yeah. yeah, how did you come up with the audit? Because that for me has been huge because we do that for brand new agents, mm -hmm. right, coming in. But I've noticed that when you did that for me and you do that for other agents, it's, it is, you know, hands down one of the best things you can do. Yeah. Oh, how did you come up with that? So actually I didn't. It was a team effort through a Realty Executives International Conference we were at. Our other uh, Canadian regional developer in Saskatoon, him and his team and our um, Ontario team had a working lunch session together and I spoke with their marketing director and he was saying you know this is the format of how we introduce agents to social media agents that maybe have been with us for a while who've never used social media brand new agents as you're saying um and i told him kind of what i do without that you know excel spreadsheet format and i just go through and kind of have a conversation with the agents so it was more of a team effort on how we came up with that actual like list and column section gotcha. of you know, calling it an audit because we were basically doing the same thing and just a few tweaks here and there. Um, but yeah, so it was definitely a, a Realty Executives Canada team effort. Um, and it works because yeah. I come across when, because I'm calling so many agents mm -hmm. to uh, recruit and everything. And I, what I'll do is I'll look at their page and I'll look at their realtor.ca page and I'll look at what comes up when I type in their name. And for what you do and what has been implemented here has been a, a huge change because I know that when I type in my name, everything comes up. All of my profiles, all of my Instagram, everything comes up. When I look at other agents, nothing comes up. And mm -hmm. I find what's worse is when you share a name with somebody famous, your name now is way lower. Yeah. And what, you're, what you've shown us and what we've implemented mm -hmm. It's so simple. It doesn't require much knowledge about social media to just get your name at the top of the list. Have and a, a simple thing of just having your picture mm -hmm. on Realtor.ca for me has it's it, it's eluded a lot of agents out there, either on purpose they don't want their picture up on Realtor.ca or they just don't know that you can do that. You know, it's it's so funny that you've implemented that here and now. All of us have that. We have our picture. We have the video, mm -hmm. which is huge. Yeah, having a YouTube, just YouTube video presenting ourselves. Where do you see now that you got your license, where do you see the next step or what's the next evolution you think is going to be happening for us agents to start using? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, the, now that I have my license, A, there's a lot of things that I can now be very helpful with, which I couldn't before. Without a real estate license, there's a lot that I can't say. Um, and now that I have it, I can answer those questions that my answer to them used to be, you have to ask Scott because I can't tell you. <laughs> but in that way, I get to be helpful, but also in the um, my ability now to, to leave the office during the day to attend showings with people, to um, attend photo shoots with people, to just physically be there with them for their social media, to be you know, marketing as a team now, 
have a little bit more of that flexibility as an agent than I did being in the office all the time. Um, and so I think we're going to see a huge change in, in the team aspect of marketing at the brokerage and the way we all market cohesively. Excellent. You know, and that's a very good point because you were limited to what you could do because it's like, well, I can't trade in real estate, so I can't talk to you about that. But now that you have your license, we, sh we should see a big change that way. Um, you know, to answer my question that I just asked you, the way I see social media, now that I've been doing this for two years, is, you know, if you're a real estate agent and you don't have social media or you're, you're limited to what you're doing, you're missing a huge opportunity because social media is now expanding. It's getting bigger. I mean, Twitter is now X, and I think X is an untapped almost uh, uh, app that you know, a lot of agents are not using. And I've noticed that LinkedIn also is an untapped area to, to hit. I know that when I post videos on LinkedIn, it actually does very well, you know? And I think those are the two things that in the future, you know, if you're a real estate agent, you should be actively posting things on there. I come across a lot of profiles because again, I'm calling agents. Mm -hmm. And I notice that they may post one video once a month. Um, they'll post something that is just what everybody else is posting. Like, for example, the Bank of Canada announcement. Everybody's posting about Bank of Canada, but they're not giving us any information. They're just saying, hey, it's, it's been lowered. Contact me for more information. It's like, you're not, you're not giving me info. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I'm going to be looking forward to with you now is we get to collaborate and now expand what we're doing so far, which is just, you know, uh, here's my listing to more in-depth videos and social media posts that is going to really help all agents at the end of the day because you know if we get contacts from that bonus but also it gives us exposure what's out there and so that other agents can see that and hopefully look at us and say hey i like that i want to join that yeah that's such a good point yeah I'm looking forward to, as well, now that you got your license and everything, working with you because now <laughs> we can bounce ideas off of each other. And it's like, hey, I got this listing. What do you think this clause should be and, and all of that? What are you looking forward to now that you've had the experience as your, the assistant for Scott mm -hmm. and now you got your license? What, what are you looking forward to? So I actually um, have a certificate in law from Queen's University. I did not know that. <laughs> And part of that was contract law. So I love a contract. I, when I was doing the administrative stuff here, I loved going through the contracts, getting all the details, looking at all the fine print. I'm the person that reads all those terms and conditions when you download a new app, that's me. Um, thank you lawyers that do that. Yes. But yeah, so I'm definitely excited to like write my first contract and like execute it and um, also, I've grown up seeing the art of negotiation, just watching my family in real estate and, you know, being a live in assistant, um, my roommate, <laughs> I like, I've watched my dad negotiate contracts and, and work with clients who are very meticulous in, in what they want and clients that either don't stand down or agents that are getting frustrated and the way that he talks with them and not to them is such like it's such a genuine reaction from him mm -hmm. that I can't imagine being the agent on the other side and not being like this guy's very good at what he does he's very so good yes I'm very excited to like learn that and emulate that so yeah. I agree and you know I look forward in we're going to do this again in about a couple of months three six months because I want to get your feedback now that you have your license. I want to see now that you're doing the work, you know, instead of telling us to do the work, you're doing the work now. And I want to get your feedback on that because I think uh, you clearly you're going to be successful. That's not going to be a question, but it's going to be awesome just to see you grow as an agent now and the multiple hats that you wear in this place. And uh, I'm looking forward to speaking to you again in about three to six months just to get, you know, touch base again and see, okay, so now that you've done this for a while, what do you think? You know, was it everything you expected? So I'll look forward to that. I really appreciate sitting with me and talking to me and I, I enjoyed this and I'm, I'm, I'm really looking for, I'm excited for the future because now that you have your license, this is going to open up a lot more doors for everybody here. 
right? Mm -hmm. Because we're growing the team, we're growing this brokerage, and it, it only gets better once once you start getting more people in. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good.